Good morning, everybody. Happy Father's Day, dads. And we're so thankful for a loving father who loves us even when we're knuckleheads and he cares for us. We're uh, in a series called The Knock at the Door, and we're looking at the ways that God pursues a relationship of, with us called grace. Uh, and so it's been a lot of fun for me to kind of look at that and look at how God wants our attention so much. If you were here last week, um, we kind of said, I, I told you that the, the crux of this came through a series of videos I saw. Uh, the Pro Football Hall of Fame is in Canton, Ohio. It looks a lot like this building because this is a picture of it. That's why it looks that way. Um, but the director of the Hall of Fame is a guy named David Baker. And David Baker is a committed, as he describes himself, a sinner in desperate need of God's grace. He's a follower of Christ. And David Baker had the idea that to approach people, to tell them that they had been invited into the Hall of Fame, that he would knock on their door. And so at the Super Bowl, all the people got together. And so he would actually go to their hotel room and he would knock on the door. We showed you a video last week. We're about to show you a video again of the invitation he made to open the door. This morning, we're actually gonna be talking about the idea that it's a choice that we make, that when the knock comes, it's a choice that we make whether we wanna open the door or not. Let's see some more from David Baker. Sorry, man, I was trying to knock on a door back there, but you don't have a door. <laughs> knock it down. Knock it down. Uh, Coach, I wanna thank you for all you've done for the game, for all you're gonna do for the game. And I wanna welcome you to Canton, Ohio, for your bronze hey, your yeah. legacy. Yeah. How about that, Bill? Hey, come on in. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> Folks, did you see him hugging his wife, me, his daughter, Megan? It's my great honor to tell you that you're going to be the 328th Hall yes. of Famer into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And your legacy is going to be in Canton, Ohio, forever. Congratulations, Coach. To be on behalf of everyone who loves football, that provided you don't come out of retirement on August 5th, uh, that you're going to do with Canton. It's one of the 303 best football players, coaches, and contributors of all time. Well, thank you. Congratulations. I certainly appreciate it. Thanks for all you've done for the game. Thank you. Do you think he really means this? <laughs> I hope you don't mind. You had a do not disturb sign on your door. We didn't know what to disturb, and I would want you to disturb us, though. Welcome to Canton, Ohio. Thank you. Appreciate okay. that. Okay. Okay. Oh, man. Give it up. Come here. God bless you, man. God bless you. Yeah. You are the most beautiful thing I've seen in a long time. I don't know, David. This might be, this might be the best class. Don't you love the cheering and the excitement from those around as the door is opened? It says in Revelation 3.20, the words of Christ, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, and we're going to focus on that this morning, the choice that we make to open the door, I will submit to you that the knock is there for each of us. And for each of us is the choice to open the door. Jesus says, I will come into him if, he, if I, he opens the door and I will dine with him and he with me. The imagery we used uh, last week was of Jesus knocking on the door. It's a famous artistic piece. And you notice there's not a doorknob on Jesus' side. And that's because it's the choice of the one on the other side of the door, whether or not to open the door. We're going to be talking in a couple of weeks about some people who choose to hit the deadbolt. The knock on the door is there, and they just choose to say no. It's a choice that we make, but for all of us, there is a knock at the door, and we're going to be talking about that for, the same, uh, for several weeks. Uh, last week, if you were here, we talked about the persistent knock, and that's the idea that Jesus is always trying to get our attention through life circumstance and through all uh, different events of life. He is trying to woo us like a magnet. He's trying to draw us in and get our attention. And he's saying, here I am. I stand at the door and knock loudly. Open the door, open the door. He wants us. 
Well, today uh, we're looking at the idea of opening the door and what does that look like. Uh, Next week, we're going to look at what stands in the way of us opening the door. But for today, we're just going to look at the idea that we can throw that door open and have a relationship with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Now, I need to tell you as we begin that this does not make sense. Grace doesn't make sense. Grace is unreasonable, but it is so very good. Um, We have a legal system that's built on a series of scales, and so the way it works is that the prosecution can make a case, and then the defense offers a rebuttal, and then the prosecution offers more evidence, perhaps, and then the defense has some different things, and then eventually the, uh, the ways that justice is supposed to work is that you look at the both sides of this and you say, okay, well, this side seems to outweigh this side, and that way the jury can make a decision or the judge can make a decision on what's right. Now, I need to tell you that if you were to ask the question to me, at least, I won't pick on you this morning, but if you were to ask the question to me, are you a good person? Do you do good stuff? Well, I have some evidence that says I'm a decent guy. You know, I love kids and I get to work with kids, have for a long time. And uh, I'm going to children's camp this week. So that's, hey, that's big stuff. So I'm gonna throw that over here. Uh, yeah, I'm tired. So that's going to be big. We have barbecue sales, so I can hook you up with some barbecue this morning. You need to go outside and get some. We're trying to send some kids to youth camp, so I got that going. Um, I like Africa a lot, so I do some stuff over there. So I've got all these things that I'm kind of saying these are my goods, right? But then there's also some stuff I do that's not great, um, and that's just between me and God, but we all have that too. But I have a problem. I have a sin problem. You see, I sin and I fall short of the glory of God. Now, your sin is between you and God, just like my sin is between me and God. But the reality is that we all have a sin problem and we all fall short of the glory of God. Now, the good news I have for you is that God has a grace solution. In fact, Christ went to a cross and he died paying a price for you and I that we could not pay to give us a life that we don't deserve. And so God has a grace solution to our sin problem, but it doesn't change the fact that we have a sin problem. And so if we were to simply try to look at all the good and the bad we do, like a set of scales, we would find ourselves in a constant battle for balance. So I wanna give you just a few words this morning that I think are true as we look at this idea of opening the door. But the first thing is that God realizes that the scales will never balance on their own. I can never do enough good to outweigh my bad. I wish that I could, I wish I could tell you that there is a certain number of works that I can do to earn my way to heaven, but in fact, that is just simply not true. I have a sin problem, and if I wanna be honest with you, and I'm not gonna pick on your sin specifically this morning, but I wanna tell you that you also have a sin problem. We have a sin problem together. We fall short of the glory of God. Now, grace begins with God. He is the one who's knocking on the door. He is the one who is constantly trying to get our attention. He is the one like a magnet wooing us to himself, but we have a problem. It says in Romans 3.23 that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Now, I will tell you, my friends, that you also, like me, are included in all. We all do bad things, and because of those bad things, our scale is out of balance. In fact, there's a consequence to that. We're told in Romans 6, 23, that the wages of our sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The price we pay for our sin problem is death. But yes, God has a grace solution. I was on an airplane uh, this week, I like to fly, some people don't, that's okay. But if you ever go on an airplane, most often there is a curtain that separates the wonders of first class and reclining seating with coach where you get maybe peanuts and you have a steel chair, not really, but kind of in the back, right? And that curtain is what separates the first class life from the average or coach life. Now Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and have it abundantly. That sounds very first class to me. But the reality is that our sin separates us from God. Because of the bad things that you and I both do, whatever they are, and again, my sin is different from your sin, but it's still sin. 
we're separate from God. We're told uh, in scripture that our iniquities have separated us uh, between us and God and our sin has hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. There is a mighty curtain that has been built up between the abundant life Christ offered us and himself. And it's because of our sin and our disobedience. And it really starts with this idea that we often have a pretty high value of ourselves. I'm number one. As the great country song says, let's talk about me. Let's talk about I. We want to draw attention often to ourselves. Yes, we are selfish people with a capital I. We're told in Romans that the mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. We think so very highly of ourselves, but we need to stop and realize that we are desperately in need of a savior. He is knocking at the door and we can choose to believe we can handle this life on our own, but my friends, if we do not open the door and do not let him in, we are missing out on life completely. I remember uh, when I was a kid, we had a dentist who came by and did a presentation at school. He had these wonderful things called plaque disposing tablets or disclosing tablets. You remember those plaque disclosing tablets? They taste terrible. And what you do is you brush your teeth really good. At least you think you're really good. And then you eat the plaque disclosing tablets and you look in the mirror and you discover what? You didn't do a good job of brushing your teeth. And so then you go back and you brush your teeth again, and then you think, perhaps I did better. Now, the solution that all of us have to that is simple. We don't eat those plaque disclosing tablets anymore, right? We just quit eating them, and then we don't have to worry about it. I brush my teeth as best that I can. I'm certainly not going to eat those tablets to find out I did a bad job. I'll just leave them wherever they were, and then I'll go on about my life. My friends, if we were to look at a sin disclosing tablet, we would realize that we are in desperate need of a Savior. But the good news I have for you is this. He stands at the door and he knocks. And if you choose to open the door, he wants to have a relationship with you. I wanna give you four key words that I think will be helpful for all of us in our quest for balance. In our attempts at opening the door and having abundant life, four key words. The first is faith. Faith is by definition believing in something that you can't see. I will tell you that opening the door is a step of faith. If you choose to open the door, if you choose to uh, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and open the door to the relationship he offers, it is a step of faith and it is a little scary. Romans 5.1 says we are justified by faith and we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Romans says that God's righteousness is revealed from faith to faith as is written, the righteous will live by faith. Faith is scary, but it is so very good. F-A-I-T-H, I spell that as an acrostic, a fantastic adventure in trusting him. He wants us to take a step of faith and obedience. If you were to think about a tightrope walker who is walking across a tightrope and there is no safety net under, that's faith. It's depending on the rope, it's depending on talent and God-given ability, and it's a step. There's a man named Charles Blunden. Uh, Blunden was a great French acrobatist, and he had the idea to put a tightrope across Niagara Falls. You might think that sounds foolish, you'd be right, but he did that. He put a tightrope across Niagara Falls and he began to walk across Niagara Falls and people gathered, crowds gathered and they cheered. It was amazing what Blunden was doing. Then Blunden said, do you think I could get a wheelbarrow and I could push a wheelbarrow across a tightrope across Niagara Falls? The people were skeptical, like some of you. Are you kidding? He did it. He was successful. He pushed a wheelbarrow across a tightrope across Niagara Falls. And then he asked a question. He said, how many of you think that I could push a person in a wheelbarrow across a tightrope across Niagara Falls? Well, at this point, they had seen his ability. They had seen the fact that he had proven himself to be able to walk across a tightrope and in fact, walk across a tightrope across Niagara Falls. In fact, even pushing a wheelbarrow. 
So there was a bunch of betting, gambling that went on, and in general, the majority of people decided that yes, in fact, they believed that Blunden would be able to push a wheelbarrow across a tightrope across Niagara Falls. And then he asked the question, who would like to get in the wheelbarrow? No takers. No thank you. We think you could do it and we'll believe right here on the side. My friends, we have seen the evidence. He still moves stones, he still works wonders. The God who raised people from the dead, the God who fed 5,000 with five loaves and two fish invites us to a faith journey with him. He has proven himself throughout history and over time. Will you get in the wheelbarrow of faith and take a journey with him? With no safety nets and no other plan Bs or contingencies, will you say yes to his knock with faith? Second thing that's necessary to open the door, I believe, is hope. Now, if faith is believing in something that we can't yet see, hope is longing for something that we don't yet have. Opening the door gives us hope. It gives us assurance. Because we know that there is someone at the door. It's not a game where somebody's knocking on the door. We open the door and there's no one there. No, in fact, God throughout history, in fact, throughout your life has been pursuing you. He wants a relationship with you. All you have to do is open the door and believe in hope that the one who is at the door will change your world. We're told in 1 John 5, this is the testimony God has given us, eternal life and this life is his son. Our hope in the midst of difficult circumstances is him. We're told in 1 John 5, 12, whoever has the son has life. Whoever does not have the son of God does not have life. 1 John 5, 13, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the son of God so that you may know you have eternal life. I do not know what the future holds, but I know who holds the future. And there is a God of hope who is longing for you and I to join him. I love the story of the two boys who were twins. They were identical in every way, except they had different outlooks on life. One of them was always positive. One of them was always negative. One Christmas, the parents put the boys to a test and the boy who was always negative woke up and he found a room full of every gift every toy a kid would ever want. There was bicycles, there were skateboards, there was even a double barrel Red Rider BB gun. He looked at it all, he sat in the middle of the room and he put his hand, his head in his hands and he just looked. And his parents went up to him and they said, are you not happy, are you not okay? And he said, no, it's fine. They said, what about this bicycle? And he said, well, you didn't get a helmet and bicycle accidents are the second leading cause of injury and death among kids my age, so I don't think I should ride the bike. What about this skateboard? And he said, mom, again, no helmet. Think it's safe? No. What about this double barrel Red Rider BB gun? He said, mom, I'll shoot your eye out. So they left. And they went to the other room where they found the other boy and before they could get there, they could smell and hear what was going on. In the middle of that room, they had very carefully piled a giant pile of horse manure. And the little boy had gotten a toy shovel and he was merrily digging away in the middle of the room. The parents were disgusted, it was everywhere, and they found one small piece of white fabric in the midst of his now brown-covered self, and they removed him from the pile for just a second, and they said, are you really, really happy right now? And he said, I'm so happy. And they said, how could you possibly be happy? And he said, with all this horse manure, there's got to be a pony in here someplace. (laughs) My friends, I wish I could sell you that this world will have all the toys you would ever want. I wish I could sell you that this world will be easy and it would be good because it would be a very easy gospel sell if I did. In fact, sometimes this world is like a pile of horse manure. It is incredibly difficult and in fact, it just stinks. But God is good. And there is something waiting for those who persevere, for those who keep digging. There is something amazing waiting for those who in hope open the door and say yes to his offer of life. The third thing I think that's a part of that is peace. 
you know, peace is not necessarily what we think about when we think about the hippie movement or the, the idea that we just need to give peace a chance. I'm not talking about world peace at all. I'm talking about a peace in our hearts. You see, opening the door gives us peace with God. Opening the door gives us peace with God. We're told in Romans 5.1, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. I saw a gentleman once who had a t-shirt on and it said, Jesus came to bring peace on earth. It leads us to a question, is that true? Did Jesus come to bring peace on earth? In fact, Jesus himself said, I did not come to bring peace on earth, I came to bring a sword. You see, if we have peace on this earth, we're missing the point because the earth is never in step with God. But Jesus came to bring peace in our hearts. And if we have peace in our hearts, then that's like a peace that passes all understanding because God is so very good. Faith is believing in something that we can't see. Hope is longing for something we don't yet have. Peace is just a reality of our heart. But there's one final ingredient to opening the door, and that's love. You see, opening the door is the way that we receive God's love. It says in Romans 5, 8, that God demonstrated his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. In 1 Corinthians 13, we're told that these three remain faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. I told you about my little friend Oscar last week, my orphan friend who taught me that the love of God in the hearts of people is great, 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 el amor de Dios. But why then is love greater than faith or hope? You see, my friends, we need faith to get through this earth. We need faith to open the door. But faith is longing for something or believing in something, excuse me, that we can't see. And one day, I believe with all my heart that one day I will be in the very presence of Jesus. And because I believe I will be in the presence of Jesus, I will not have faith. Because if faith is believing in something I can't see, one day I will see it all. And hope, hope is longing for something I don't yet have. Hope is plunging through the pile of horse manure with our shovel, believing something better is coming. But my friends, one day, something better will come. Hope is longing for something we don't yet have when we're in the very presence of Jesus. Guess what? We will have it all. But love will remain. Love is the reality of heaven that we get to experience on this earth. And love is the way we are able to open the door because God so loved the world that he sent one to knock on the door that if anyone would believe in him and open the door, they would never perish, but instead have eternal life. You see, the final thing that's true this morning is that the opportunity to open the door is a gift from God. It's a gift We're told in Ephesians, for by grace we have been saved through faith. It is not of our own doing, it is the gift of God, not as a result of works so that no one can boast. And again, there's one who stands at the door and he's been knocking for a very long time. And he says, here I am. Here I am. I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. Here I am. I want you to think for a second about what would happen if you were on trial and the question is, are you good enough? I gave you my little spill here this morning and I kind of gave you my idea of trying to find balance. And again, none of the things over here at this point am I trying to do to find balance, but it's just some evidence I might offer. But if you were on trial, if the Polk County Courthouse were to convene tomorrow morning and there had been jury summons issued to a jury of your peers, so perhaps 12 people that you are in some way acquainted with, and then the question was to be asked, are you good enough? And some people might come and offer uh, Uh, weight of evidence on the side of the plaintiff and they would say, well, they're good enough because of these things. And they actually went to church yesterday, so that was good. And all these different things that you could offer. And then we don't really like to think about it, but perhaps there's some people on the other side who might offer 
some other things. And the problem we have is that the other things are always too much. And our scales are hopelessly out of balance. When you be able to see this. I don't know what your trial looks like. I'm just telling you what mine's going to look like at the end. I have a sin problem. I fall short of the glory of God. But the good news is that God has a grace solution. And with it, he tips the balance. And in fact, not only does he tip the balance, but he breaks the scale. And he says, my grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in your weakness. And I stand at the door and I knock. And if you will open the door and let me in, I will change your world. So my question this Father's Day, my friends, is will you open the door? And if you've already opened the door years ago, will you pray for those who have not yet said yes to his offer of grace and forgiveness and redemption? Because he stands at the door and he knocks. And all we have to do is let him in.